Today we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. My idea for this show was to invite guests and get the conversation started, to take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. And we encourage our listeners to look within themselves to take decisive action to make a positive difference. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers. And we are engaged in podcast reflections where I am covering and, and going over all the amazing shows and the amazing guests who have been on Bill Myers Inspires during my first year of the podcast. And so we will not uh, uh, um, uh, pause or, or dally around too much with that because last week I got as far as I could go. So we've got much more to cover today. And uh, last week we concluded with my good friend Tom Alvarez, who's a television producer and um, a, a very wonderful, you know, theater producer and writer and director and actor. And, and he was talking about authenticity and becoming comfortable in your own skin. And that was a really wonderful conversation. The very next week, our show was on December 18th, 2020. And it was entitled The Salvation Army, Meeting Human Needs in time like times like these with the guest reverend charlotte coffer and that was really wonderful to really get um some information uh because it is during the time of christmas time and the holiday season that we all see you know the red buckets come out and the person standing there jingling the bell and and this is the salvation army and they do this every holiday season and it's probably the biggest most dramatic and and uh predictable event uh as you are going to the shopping malls or or uh, uh department stores there's this setup right outside and it's the salvation army so we learned a lot about the history of that activity and the history of the salvation army and the really really wonderful works that they do. And, and my takeaway with that was I did not realize that the Salvation Army itself is a ministry. And so that was probably the biggest uh, sort of takeaway for me uh, and, and just learning more and more of the origin of the Salvation Army and the wonderful work that they do. So I want you to keep that in mind when you see the guys, you know, and gals ringing the bell and, and are collecting money uh, during the holiday season. The very next week, uh, December 25th, we did a Christmas sing-along with my number one fan. And that happens to be Miss Sandy Lomax, who's a wonderful jazz singer here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I believe her to be the Indianapolis Queen of Scat. She is fantastic, and she does a wonderful one-woman show uh, that is on uh, that covers Ella Fitzgerald who was definitely the, the first lady of scat for sure. So Sandy Lomax was able to sort of reflect with me some of her favorite shows up from July 17th when I started up till Christmas uh, because she's a pretty devoted follower of the show. So she was able to reflect on some of her favorite shows and also give me some suggestions of possible topics moving forward. So we certainly appreciate that on December 20th and she also rendered uh three or four christmas songs and we we dubbed that a sing-along so that was a really good time and i really enjoyed that january the first we were uh delivering a show and the theme was healing and hope from the devastation of loss with richard brendan richard brendan is a really wonderful friend and he's a minister he is a chaplain and his specialty is um, hospice work. And so we were talking about um, all the losses and, and, and uh, the time that we were in at January the 1st, looking forward into the new year, dealing with COVID and the many um, devastating losses that folks experienced during that time. And he offered some really wonderful insight into how uh, 
we can look at these transitions from life to the beyond um, in, uh, in ways that may help us um, process these, these losses. Um, so that was really, really wonderful. And I thank Richard Brendan, uh, who has a very wonderful radio program called Journey's Fire, which has inspired me for many, many years. January the 8th, 2021. The title was Con Consider It Pure Joy with author Jennifer Jones Austin. Jennifer Jones Austin is amazing. Um, she had been on the show previously talking about racism in uh, the social services and philanthropy. And I brought her back to discuss a book that she wrote that was a, a, a biographical or autobiographical book dealing with her um, life crisis, uh, which was, um, uh, uh, oh goodness, she was struggling with leukemia. She had cult developed leukemia as an adult. And um, just to be a professional woman uh, and, and very much active and mom and, and, and wife and all of these wonderful roles, and then all of a sudden to come down in your prime with a fatal disease, leukemia. And um, she chronicled the wonderful story of how she rallied and, and how others rallied all around the world to, in an effort to uh, come up with the right blood type and the right solution that would save her life. It's, a, it's a, an amazing book. And her book is called Consider It Pure Joy. And I recommend that to anyone who is searching for uh, uh, wonderful inspiration and um, hope because it is an amazing story. And she is alive and well today as a result of those efforts and her own prayer and her own faith in Almighty God. So uh, Jennifer Jones Austin is a rock star. January 15th, Home is Where the Heart Is, was the theme of the show, and it was with Sabe Jones Martin, who similarly shared her story and struggle with um, acquiring a brain aneurysm um, well into her adulthood and her near-death experience with that, and how through that experience her life was transformed um, uh, an amazing story, uh, Sabay Jones Martin. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that she's still around because she has so much. Uh, she does so much work in the community of Indianapolis, Indiana, and is a wonderful voice in the community and advocate for the least of these. So we're we're very grateful for uh, for Sabay Jones Martin. My very next show, January 22nd, was called the COVID Comeback with music producer Rodney Stepp. Now, this was the very first show that I had done covering COVID, the pandemic itself. And Rodney uh, was, was um, uh, struck in, stricken with COVID and uh, had a very, very um, tough time with COVID. I mean, uh, Rodney was very much near death and uh, and how the, the the hospital staff, the um, the music community, the music fans in our community, how everyone rallied and prayed for Rodney's uh, turnaround. And he was with us sharing that he had caught COVID very early on. I think it may have been like uh, the 20th of March or something, right around the time that the shutdown happened and here in the state of Indiana, but also nationally when things started shutting down. So he was one of the very first cases, identified cases, and he was hospitalized and, and intubated for a number of months uh, before he was uh, out and able to uh, come home. But he was conveying all of the, the long-term illnesses and uh, that are res as a result of COVID that he was still struggling with. Uh, he was talking about having to be on dialysis because of the kidney damage and how he's waiting for a kidney transplant and how he was, even when he was sent home, he was spending nine hours at the time that we did the interview, almost a year after catching COVID, nine hours every evening on dialysis 
in his home. He had also was wearing a mask when we started the interview and I asked him if he would please remove the mask and he shared that one of the other uh, uh, results of his COVID stint was that he was dealing with dental issues at the time that we did the interview and had just had a number of teeth extracted because of bacterial infections that occurred during the time that he was intubated. And uh, I asked him if he would remove that mask when he did the show, and he graciously did, because I wanted so much to give the public and those people who may have doubts about whether COVID's valid or not, a very real life picture of someone who lived through it and was continuing to deal with the after effects of COVID. So COVID was very real, and I do thank Rodney Stepp, who was doing amazingly well at this time. He's still got some struggles, but I pray that he will continue on the positive track that he's on. So um, that was an amazing show with Rodney, and I'm grateful. The very next week, January 29th, the show was entitled Ancient Hawaiian Healing with author and speaker and healer Belinda Farrell. And this was a fascinating story because Belinda was 48 years old when she collapsed with herniated discs and spinal nerve damage and threatened with paralysis by her medical doctors. She didn't have surgery, but instead chose to apply ancient Hawaiian healing practices she had been learning the previous three years. So she applied these practices to her own condition. And amazingly, her back completely healed, including her childhood illness and, and bout with scoliosis. So for 15 years or so now, she has been sharing this amazing story and teaching of the ancient Hawaiian healing uh, techniques. And also, she's the author of a wonderful book called, uh, you know, how to get, uh, you know, how to steal your friggin joy back. Um, so she's amazing, positive uh, force, and I, I was so grateful to to befriend Belinda and uh, and uh, and for that show to happen. That entire month of January, I really wanted to focus on healing and hope because there are so many people struggling, and I just wanted to make sure that we were um, devoting as much time to honoring those people who have who have been struggling and you know and through the through the past year and um because there was so much of that in the midst of also all the political discord and racism of which the show was doing a very very deep dive so before we go to our break i do want to talk about the next show which was february 5th 2020 2021 with an amazing woman named risha rainey and the show was I'm a descendant of Thomas Jefferson. And this was pretty amazing because this was my very first show to kick off Black History Month. And um, Risha is a member, as, as an African-American woman, a member and an officer in the Daughters of the American Revolution, which has traditionally been a very white organization. And uh, so that's what fascinated me initially with, with her and bringing her on the show was, how is it that a black woman is holding an officer position in an organization, Daughters of the American Revolution, which has been traditionally white? And she brought it, boy. She brought in all of the stories and, and shared so many amazing stories of these interracial relationships that had been occurring since before the establishment of the United States uh, officially, and also afterwards, very much during the same time when slavery, the institution of slavery was alive and well, and it was prohibited by law and, and by threat of death. The idea of someone having meaningful relationships with slaves and, and, and uh, with blacks and whites intermingling, and she brought many, many stories of you know, black men, white women, white women, black, you know, men uh, in every combination they're in, you know, white men, black women, so on, that had uh, had mingled, lived together happily uh, in spite of a nation with a policy of slavery and, and how these relationships and how many uh, descendants 
of these relationships exist. And she was sort of curating these various stories um, on a fellowship from Harvard University um, that she would, had received to curate these stories. So amazing work that Risha Rainey is doing. And again, uh, you know, thank you so much for being here. And we are going to um, get ourselves ready for a break here any moment. And uh, but again, it's so amazing to take a journey and to, for me to take a look and reflect back on all the amazing guests. And I hope that you're enjoying this sort of uh, abridged version of, of these various shows. And I hope that you take time perhaps to go back and listen to some of those shows that you may have missed along the way. Um, so it's been, it's been fantastic and I look forward to many, many more shows, but I do think it's worthy of taking a look at that very first year. And I appreciate your, your attention and you tuning in and supporting Bill Myers Inspires. And on that note, we're going to take a break right now. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires right here on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires, and I'm your host, Bill Myers. And we are dealing with podcast reflections as I take a look at the latter half of my very first year of podcast on Bill Myers Inspires. So, Moving right along, um, on February the 12th, the title of the show was Jazz Has Been Uprooted with my special guest, Kadifa Wong. Kadifa Wong is a filmmaker who is out of London, England, and she joined us uh, because she was locked down in London. And uh, But she is a filmmaker who was uh, a previously a dancer. She was a professional dancer and then had some injury that sort of curtailed her dance career and she became a filmmaker. And she decided to do a film entitled Uprooted, which was uh, and is an informative and powerful documentary on the history of jazz dance. While America has recognized jazz as a national treasure and often referred to as America's greatest cultural contribution to the 20th century to the world, jazz music, culture, and dance 
all seem to suffer the same challenges deeply rooted in racism. And it was amazing because I have a, a pretty significant uh, history and, and professional background in the area of jazz, not only as a professional musician, but also as an executive and administrator of, of uh, national jazz organizations and have been involved with jazz for a, a very, very long time. And it was interesting to talk to uh, Kadifa and to hear that um, the narrative that seemed to be uh, happening with jazz dance as she saw it, I wanted her to be full aware that it was exactly the same thing that was happening with jazz music, which is the question that she poses in the, in the film uh, to the viewers is the same one that I think I share and is the question for jazz music as well, which is jazz music being appreciated or appropriated. Because over time, what has happened, and this was her argument, over time, what has happened is the credit for jazz dance has actually been accredited to white choreographers and, uh, and, and, and uh, dance instructors and all of this and also then you know the, the formal dance world suggests that that jazz dance actually has its roots in european ballet and this is not the case at all in fact she was arguing that uh, jazz dance has its roots in uh, west africa in fact as does jazz music and again we have the same thing going on with the music where it feels like sometimes it's being appropriated the narrative and the creators of jazz being white individuals as opposed to the truth being that these were black individuals that were the source of and the, the creators of this art form. Of course, not to discredit uh, white performers in both jazz dance and or music and the collaboration and the creation of the music and the evolution of the music. But clearly the roots of this thing, the roots, uh, you know, uh, come from the fruits of Africa um, so moving right along, amazing show, Kadifa Wong, amazing filmmaker, great stuff. February 19th, our show was entitled Blacks Who Are True First with television film producer Gerald Harkness. Now, I had had Gerald on the show previously uh, talking about racism as it relates to the film industry and television industry. And... Uh, but in this instance, this is the second show, third show in Black History Month, I wanted to highlight this wonderful series that he created, which was called True First, which was um, it was broadcast, you know, on, on, on many television networks. And it was called True First. And what it was, was a series that introduced to the public to unknown, uh, largely unknown black historic figures who were first in a variety of fields and areas. And so I was talking to Gerald and he was able to share some of those amazing stories and insights that most of us have never heard. Many of them, 90% of what he was saying, I was completely unfamiliar with myself. So I appreciate Gerald bringing this, these truths to the table and this valuable information uh, that we can, to the audience so that we can learn something. And I just want to give a shout out to Gerald because today is the day that he is laying his father to rest, a legendary NBA and college basketball star, Jerry Harkness. Um, and so again, my love and prayers to the family um, as they mourn the loss of their father and, and loved one. The very next week, February 26th, the show was entitled Memphis Struggles for Justice with MCAP co-founder Justin J. Pearson. Um, Justin J. Pearson came on my radar from uh, Tim Guinea, who I had had on when I was discussing racism and climate change. And Tim was very adamant that I reach out to this young man in Memphis, Tennessee, named Justin J. Pearson, who I was unfamiliar with. And I'm so grateful that he did because Justin was in the process of doing some community organizing because there was an, uh, a large Texas oil company, uh, two companies, in fact, billion dollar oil companies that were attempting to build oil pipelines and run them right through the uh, black community 
uh, low income black community of Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, their rationale was that was the community of least resistance for them to do this. And uh, Justin and, and several others united and f formed uh, Memphis community against the pipeline, which is MCAP. Um, at the time that we did this initial interview, uh, and there were maybe two or 300 people supporting this community organization. And uh, over time, this thing grew to be tens of thousands uh, across the nation that rallied together against this oil company. So Justin J. Pearson reminds me very much of the spirit of a Barack Obama, a young community organizer. And I say, please keep your eyes and ears open for Justin J. Pearson. He's an amazing uh, young man and is doing still amazing work in Memphis, Tennessee, and the struggle continues. March the 5th, 2021, um, my guest was the owner and founder of Inspired Choices Network, which was Christine McIver. McIver, let me get it right, McIver. Um, Christine, um, I wanted her to come on and to, to share and, and, and discuss her take as a female business owner. Um, at that time, what I was really interested in was being able to find out <clears throat> and give some insight to the challenges that women face in the world of business, not just as employees, but as business owners. And um, just really wanted to shine the spotlight on that. and how to start up a business and how to uh, get funding for a business and, and what types of challenges are you up against in a world that still largely is male dominated, uh, unfortunately, particularly in the business realm. And we're still working very hard for equity and, and, uh, and equality and justice in these areas. But I just thought it was very, very important. And I thought no better person to ask and to bring on board to have that discussion than the person who owns this very network. So Christine McIver, I am grateful to you and thank you for bringing your insight and message to the, uh, the audience on that day. Um, my very next show, March the 12th, was entitled Aging Creatively, Dancing with the Polka with guest Sandra Gay. Now, this is a very interesting uh, story because as you see, I am in a different setting today. I am actually broadcasting to you from Witherspoon Presbyterian Church. And uh, thanks to Pastor, uh, the Reverend Dr. Winterborne Harrison Jones, for letting me use his setup today. But at this very church, there is a theatrical program that has been started for senior women. And uh, and it's an amazing program that actually I, my mother is also now a part of, proudly I say this, because for senior women to be able to come together to be able to um, uh, read scripts, uh, share stories, uh, uh, play, that's the beautiful thing about theater is the art of play. Uh, there's movement involved. There's, uh, these give us the ability to exercise our bodies, to exercise our mental capabilities. All of these things are, are, are nurturing and, and generating creative juices, which are healing, provide healing to this community of, of uh, senior women. And so my guest, Sandra Gay, this was her brainchild. This is her program. And she is doing amazing work. And so the title, Dancing with the Polka, is the polka is persons of a certain age. <laughs> is how she phrases that. So we don't talk about elderly, we don't talk about aged, we don't talk about that. No, we talk about the polka, which is persons of a certain age. So Sandra Gay, that program is still going well, and I certainly appreciate her coming on and sharing that in hopes that other people might see theater or that model that she has cultivated here at Witherspoon Presbyterian Church as a viable model to enact in other communities because it's so important that we continue to find creative activities and activities for our seniors, our beloved seniors, to engage one another and still uh, bring their uh, bring their life and, and vivaciousness to to meaning and to share with others. So 
I appreciate that. So I, I challenge everyone to, to find or create a program such as that in your community. Again, we're ready for a break now. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires right here on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers, and we're moving right along. So now we are into March the 19th, and my guest on March the 19th was, is, was, is, the president of Optimist International, and the title of the show was Optimism Today in a World in Need of Light with Optimist International President Mark Weinsoff. And it was really wonderful. I'm a member of Optimist International. I'm a member of the Optimist International Global Optimist Club. And um, But it was amazing to have Mark on the show to talk about and share with the listeners about Optimus International. And as it turned out, the very next day, um, I was a special guest uh, for a music competition that they that Optimus International held. And he wanted me to be sort of the keynote speaker and to provide an inspirational message to the young people because of my being a musician and my music background. So it was an honor to do that. And it was an amazing event the next day. So thank you, Mark Weinsoff, for being on the show. And uh, uh, check out the good works of Optimus International if you get a chance. The very next show, March the 26th, Where Am I in Search of Me in History? With my guest, Emmy Award-winning journalist Marquette Shepard. Uh, so that was an amazing show because Marquette is a published author with Simon & Schuster, and Marquette's specialty is children's books. And the idea of this was her need to write books, children's books, specifically for children of color, um, because she realized that there seemed to be a void in that market. And so that's what she did was she created books and flashcards and all kind of educational materials for children uh, of color. And I thought that was pretty amazing. And Marquette um, is the CEO of the Glowstream TV Network. Um, so I challenge you and, and, and ask you to please uh, give the Glowstream TV Network 
a look-see because Marquette's doing some amazing things there. So thank you, Marquette, for being on the show and sharing with this this amazing work for children of color. Getting into April, April 2nd, our program was Anti-Asian Hate Crimes, America versus Humanity with Mia Korff. Mia Korff was a cast mate of mine in the revival of Godspell in New York City. Mia is a wonderful uh, young lady, but she also is is uh, of Asian descent. She's actually mixed race, I believe half Asian and half German, I believe. But it was, I wanted to get more insight into her because I had done a show previously on anti-Asian hate crimes with Christine Toy Johnson, but the numbers kept going up and I felt like I absolutely needed to do another show to once again talk about anti-Asian hate crimes. And so Mia Korff was with me on that day. And she is an amazing, she provided some really great insight from her experiences uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and her thoughts on behalf of the Asian community. So I appreciate that Mia. And um, so that was, that was uh, anti-Asian hate crimes, America versus humanity, April the 3rd. On April the 9th, my guest was Senator Sally Harrell, uh, and the show was on the Georgia voting rights. And at that time, the Georgia uh, uh, legislature had just passed a series of voting rights bills, many of which uh, many deemed to be racist and that they unfairly target uh, communities of color as far as making it more and more difficult for um, p communities of color to participate in the voting uh, and exercise their voting rights. So she was here as a member of the uh, the uh, Georgia legislature, a senator, a state senator, who happened to be a classmate of mine from high school. So it was great to get that inside scoop uh, from somebody who was in the room and she detailed and really went through that whole thing, pros and cons, and why people may think it's racist and why it is racist in some instances. But I was so grateful to get that inside scoop from someone who was there on the front line and was a part of that actual deliberation and process. April the 16th, we were celebrating Jazz History Month. And my guest on that day was All That Jazz was the name of the show, America's Greatest Cultural Contribution with my special guest, a smooth jazz recording artist, Alex Bunyon. And that was pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, again, I was asking Alex as a smooth jazz artist, his thoughts about um, jazz music. Alex is from Switzerland. And, uh, and I was asking about the notion of, of race and, and jazz music. And I was just wanting to find out his perspective and Alex basically shared with me that his criteria was uh, if, if it doesn't have, uh, you know, uh, the influence, the black influence, he doesn't consider it jazz, which I thought was pretty amazing. So it must possess the soul and the, the, the DNA and the contribution of black musicians for it to be jazz, says Alex Bunyon. And I thought that was a pretty tremendous insight. And I do thank Alex for being with us because I've had I've interviewed Alex before and he's a wonderful musician. And I'm grateful that he took the time out to uh, share his time with on the podcast with me. The very next week, April 23rd, from Justice to Jazz was the title of show of the show, Let Freedom Ring, with jazz recording artist Nita Freelon. It just so happens that during that show, during that week, matter of fact, maybe a day before that show, the verdict came in on the Derek Chauvin trial, where he was found guilty for on three counts of murder of George Floyd. And so our dialogue, as much as it was from justice to jazz, seemed to be appropriate. And Nina really brought some pretty tremendous insights um, and, and applications uh, as a jazz musician and the things we learn as a jazz musician. How do we navigate the, the types of circumstances, the racism that we're, we are dealing with, the, the, uh, the struggles with this with justice in this nation 
and how do we do that as jazz musicians? And I, I thought that was a very insightful and powerful dialogue with Nina, and I'm grateful for her of being on the show. My next show, April the 30th, was called Police Reform to Better Protect and Serve with the mayor of Ithaca, New York, Svante Myrick. Now, Svante Myrick was referred to me by Mia Korf, uh, who was here just a few weeks earlier talking about anti-Asian hate crimes. Mia uh, attended Cornell University and lives in Ithaca, New York, and, and called me on the phone and said, you know, you should have Mayor Svante Myrick on the show. He's doing some amazing things. And so she was sharing that with me. And what is so amazing about Svante Myrick was, as everybody's concern became, how do we reform police departments? He literally came up and proposed a complete revisioning of the police department, totally throw out all of what the police department was and construct from the ground up a brand new idea, a brand new concept for policing. And he actually had just gotten that passed by the city council. And he is in the process of enacting that right now. Svante Myrick was a wonderful guest, and I look forward to many, many more dialogues with him. And again, keep your eye out because he is a special guy, and, uh, and I, the people of Ithaca are cultivating, hopefully, a model that can be rolled out for the rest of the nation. So good luck and, and all best wishes to the good people of Ithaca, New York. My very next week, uh, May 14th, Black Women in Self-Care was with legendary uh, journalist and Emmy award-winning journalist, Miss Janice Adams. And Janice, uh, Dr. Janice Adams, um, shared with us, as we talked about Black Women in Self-Care, the one thing that is my takeaway from that was she shared with me, um, she was a, a, a letter, that she was asked to compose as a letter to um, the mother of Brianna Taylor. And that was one of the most powerful things I'd ever heard in my life. Um, and I will just leave that there. And I would invite everyone to go and check out Black Women in Self Care. Uh, it was just incredibly powerful. And uh, Dr. Janice Adams, um, I'm so grateful that she was here with us. The next week, May 21st, the show was called Black Men and Fitting In with Alan Jones and Phil Coleman. Now, these two individuals, I in, a, in the course of a week, I'd had two conversations with two individuals that do not know each other, who both referenced the idea of being mature black men and not feeling like they fit in regarding the, the, the larger black culture. And I wanted them both to come on and share their both of their perspectives and see where there might be common ground. Um, there are many, many reasons why people may feel this way, but I just thought it was really significant to have them come in and to share their perspectives on black men and fitting in. And that's a pretty powerful show as well. May 28th, pause, reflect. George Floyd, one year later with Dr. Winterborn, Harrison Jones. That show was very, very powerful because the the reason and the, the ultimate impetus for Bill Myers Inspires, it was inspired by the George Floyd incident and my need to get involved in the national conversation on racism in America. And um, the Reverend Dr. Winterborn Harrison Jones, it was a wonderful dialogue to share that space with him and to share his insight with me and the audience as we, again, continue to grapple with what a year later, as we reflect on what that year had brought and, uh, and, and the positives and what it still falls short with. So very powerful conversation. The very next week was called Blacks and Autism from Disability to Super Blessing with my guest Antonio Myers. Antonio Myers is out of Washington, D.C. and an amazing young man who who battled and 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 fought and and beat the odds he was deemed a vegetable as a youngster and he became an overachiever as a young man uh, and as a student in school an amazing and inspiring story and what he was able to reveal to us all was the lack of data that exists in the study of autism as it relates to the black community and communities of color and so that was an amazing 
insight, and I hope that we're able to do better in the future and gather more and more data as it relates to um, the effect of autism in communities of color. We're going to take a break right now. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires right here on the Inspired Choices Network as we do podcast reflections. We'll be right back. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. Here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires, and I am putting on my tennis shoes because we're almost there. June the 11th. The title of our show was Black Protest, The Pulpit to the Streets with Jennifer Jones Austin. Now, Jennifer had the distinction of being once, twice, three times a lady, the only person to be on Bill Myers Inspires three times. And so I give her that honor. But Jennifer had republished a book entitled God in the Ghetto, or God is in the Ghetto, uh, that her father had written, who was a very well-known minister in New York. Um, Uh, several years ago and had passed away, but she felt that the time was right to republish that book, and she was absolutely correct. So please check this show out as we explored the topics in that, which um, it's so compelling. Um, um, That book, as well as that dialogue with Jennifer Jones Austin, Black Protest, The Pulpit to the Streets. June 18th was about Juneteenth, the historic significance with Faye Williams. Faye Williams is a longtime attorney and civil rights activist in Indianapolis, Indiana. Faye Williams is also a a, a native of Galveston, Texas, the very city in which Juneteenth occurred in. And she was able to share her insights um, on how, and his story, history of Juneteenth uh, as a resident of Galveston and how, uh, how much ownership the 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 uh, 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 natives of Galveston feel about and uh, about uh, Juneteenth um, and all of that, but she was able to clarify a number of things because I hadn't always been the big fan of the idea of Juneteenth, and Juneteenth had just become a couple of days before we did this interview was named a national holiday in the United States, and uh, so again the timeliness of these shows and the events surrounding them sometimes even amazes me. Uh, You you couldn't plan it like that. The very next week, June 25th, Memphis, justice delayed. David versus Goliath goes 15 rounds. This show was, again, I brought Justin Pearson, uh, one of the founders of MCAP, who are battling the the big Texas oil companies in Memphis. And uh, from the time of our original show, certain votes had been sort of kicked down the curb, tick kicked down the curb, and they were still battling, uh, waiting for this to be this case to be heard with the city county council. And I just want to get to the end game. After we did this show and he shared about all the delays, less than three days later, the oil companies, based on all the pressure from from Justin, um, the MCAP movement, 
uh, Jane Fonda, Justin Timberlake, Danny Glover, um, Al Gore coming in, bringing the full force of climate reality to bear, and also going then to the White House and meeting with President Biden about this. The oil companies on their own decided not to pursue it any further and backed out of that whole deal. So victory to that extent was exacted by the efforts of Justin and the amazing work of the MCAP group down in Memphis, Tennessee. The next show, Critical Race Theory. What's the big deal? And I brought back Dixon White, who was my very first guest on Bill Myers Inspires, um, to address and give his take on all the pushback on critical race theory, which really for many is nothing more than American history, the, tor the story we, we don't include. Um, July 16th, Blacks in the Military, what are we defending? This show was with my guest and, and former trumpet teacher, jazz trumpeter Clifford Ratliff, who was a military veteran who wrote me an email one day and said, man, I don't think that Blacks should serve in the military or, or that they should uh, make themselves available to, uh, to, for combat because of the voting rights being jeopardized here. I don't think that they should shed an ounce of blood for this nation and boy that was something and that show and that message um, from a former military officer and veteran was very very powerful in fact um, I did the next week's show July 23rd on blacks in the military part two uh, from another career um, veteran of the Marines uh, James Morris who actually had heard the very first show uh, with Clifford, and then he came back and he had much to say and far more insight into this dialogue, who also agreed that uh, when it, when you mess with the voting rights, you mess with the service to the country. What are you fighting for? Again, was the statement that we originally had. July 30th, impermanence. Everything must change with Branch Ryan. Um, that was an amazing show as well. And again, at this point, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that was the wrap of the entire year because I had started the previous July 17th. And now our story takes us all the way to July 30th. So whew, I actually did do it. I was uncertain if I could do it, but I did do it. And you just witnessed it. And so we bad, we bad, we bad. Um, not me bad, we bad, because you actually had to sit and listen to all that. But Overall, it's been an amazing year, and I really, really so have enjoyed exploring these topics from my curiosity um, and being able to engage these conversations with all these amazing guests and experts, many people I've never met and many people now I'm so pleased to call my friend, um, wonderful relationships that have transpired as a result of this last year's bit of shows. And again, I'm going to continue doing the shows, but I just, I really want to thank you all and encourage you to pl please take a look and listen back at some of these shows. In fact, I'm going to go back and listen to some of them because, I, you know, sometimes you forget the list keeps going and it gets longer and longer. And all of a sudden you're going, wait a minute, you know, I, 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 I want to go back and be, you know, as a reminder of some of these amazing folks and these amazing perspectives. So again, Thank you for tuning in here, and I so appreciate you and your commitment and your your curiosity and your support of Bill Myers Inspires, and I thank all my people uh, at Inspired Choices Network, my producer, Kim. I want to give her a shout out, you know, uh, and, and recognize her, and also Christine McIver, the owner of the network, and so I'm so grateful for you guys and being able to support this last year for Bill Myers. and. Um, Man, it's, it's been really, really amazing. So I hope that you continue to listen in and, and I'm committed to bringing you some more amazing topics and guests in the future. So um, I appreciate you and it's been, it, it, it's amazing. So we just press on and hopefully I'll be back in my own setting the next time. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Jazz hand. Thank you for spending your afternoon right here with us at Bill Myers Inspires. Remember, we're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Inspired Choices Network. 
Remember to take time this week to take a breath and look within yourself and figure out how you can make a positive difference in this world. Spread the word, and we'll see you here next Friday. Have a wonderful week.